item 2.0, um, Rockford High School Student Representative Report. Maybe I'm Courtney, I don't know who's going to go first. I'll go first. All right, we've got the floor. All right, third quarter is coming to a close, and all the students are very excited for summer to be coming in soon. I know as a senior, I can't wait for graduation. <laughs> but um, uh, we're having four students that were selected to take pictures for NEAS, and I know there are a lot of other students that are being asked to sit in the conversations, so we'll find out how those go. And that is on Sunday the 28th, I want to say, April 28th. As for FFA news, we're doing the Fill the Tractor Food Drive this week. Today was the first day, so we're hoping that we can get a lot more food. We only got 11 cans in today, so we're hoping for the rest of the week to have it pick up. We have, um, it's going to be out in front of, in front of Mr. Bames' office from 7 to 8 in the morning. And then also, this is month, or now Tuesday through Friday. And then on Friday, it's going to be out in front of the school from 2 to 6. So that will give another opportunity for the food items to be brought in. So we're hoping for a good outcome at the end of the week. Okay, well, we have STEM job shadow day um, coming up, which is where a lot of students who are interested in science and math and those kind of areas get an opportunity to go out in the working field and um, they pick a job that they think they might be interested in and follow that person all day to see what they do and if they're really interested in that. And along with the NES lines, it's photo for students who are asked to go around town and take pictures of really what they think um, this town is. You know, we have a lot of kids going to Valley Falls and a lot of kids going around and seeing like the beauty of the town and a lot of kids going downtown to show, you know, some of the really cool old buildings and stuff like that. So we're getting ready to put our best foot forward with our photography program and um, show the NIAS, in the NIAS presentation what not only our photo program is capable of, but what our town, like the town through our perspective, which is really a great opportunity. We also have the Cupcake Wars coming up, which is where uh, we have a student and a teacher pair up, and I believe it's on a Thursday, and you pay to come in and you choose four cupcakes, and you eat them and you vote <coughs> on who you thought was the best, and so that's really something exciting in our school that I know a lot of people are excited for. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions for our student reps? Mr. Kemp. Yes, I do. Uh, item 6.3 tonight is, is a, a policy change for the Board of Ed on graduation requirements in which the, the uh, suggestion include, the suggestions include um, the, the, the uh, 40 hours of community service towards your graduation. And I'd be very interested to hear what the student body has to say about that. And uh, if not now, by the time we get to 6.3 or now or both, if you'd like to comment on it, uh, we, I, I for one would be happy to hear what you have to say. I can, um, as for the freshman class, because I think it affects the freshman rather than the upperclassmen, I don't think it's a hard requirement to me. I think it's how you sell it to the kids. As a senior, I don't really look around for those kind of things, but I don't know how it's being told to the kids. I know that in the advisor advisory groups, not all of them are organized in a way where all the teachers are spreading the same information. I know that just from the senior advisor advisory, and I think it's really hard maybe for some of the freshman students to understand that the consistency throughout it. That's just my personal opinion. But as far as getting those hours, it's not hard. I mean, there's a food drive this Friday that you can stay after school and help out, and that's going to be two to six. So that's definitely five hours right there that a student can pick up on. So I think it's looking for those opportunities and jumping on them. Because as a senior graduating, I have well over, I think I've gotten 25 hours per quarter just for a go -ag. So it's not hard to accomplish. That, so. I just want to say I think it's a brilliant idea to have community service necessary for graduation because it simply sends kids out with a positive message and a positive goal whether they're being forced into it or not it's something that 
is going to bring a lot of positivity towards our town and something that everyone will benefit from. And like Courtney said, it, it isn't a hard thing to achieve. I know for um, some of the programs I'm in that are required to do 20 hours of community service, but even then it's not hard if you just segment it. But I do agree that it's how the message is getting, getting across because I know a lot of kids aren't doing what they're required to do and I think the advisee needs to be strict and say this is what needs to happen for you to graduate and getting that message across is really what's going to make it happen. I think a lot of it does have to do with organizational, just the like it's not, um, the advisor advisee, would, it's not structured at all. There needs to be some kind of curriculum where all the teachers are on the same basis because it's not, the word isn't being spread somehow throughout the students. So. Thank you for your feedback. Mr. Buttar, thank you. I just Please use your microphone. Thank you. I uh, have a question. The uh, we have twenty-two credits for uh, what do you think that? And then the next one we have twenty-three. Then we have twenty-four. Uh, is this a question for the students or is this a question on the actual agenda? We're going to talk about the agenda item in detail here in a short bit. Alright, thank you. Okay, so we're good. Alright, thank you. Thank you for your reports this evening. Okay, so we'll move on to item 3.0, which is our community forum. This is the opportunity for comments on the agenda items, potential future agenda items, or general information provided to the board from citizens and community organizations. Is there anyone who wishes to speak to the board this evening? If so, please raise your hand. Please come forward and state your name and address for the record. Tanya Dana Merrill, 138 Grove Street. I have a couple things I'd just like to bring to the board's attention. I really enjoyed the community conversation the other night. It was. Um, really well done and the conversation was very stimulating in the focus groups and I was very intrigued to see some of the same content come back from all the focus groups. So that was pretty interesting for me. But because I cannot be here Wednesday night, um, I didn't know you were having a meeting until it was just spoken. It's not on the calendar and the district website so I don't know if that can be checked and if there's going to be more of those could be added too so we could plan to be here if we want to. I would appreciate that. And this may be a pipe dream. But I'm going to plead with all of you to look at our budget, to look in the mirror, and make the hard decisions, and cut things so that we can have full day kindergarten in Vernon. That was one of your priorities when you started this budget season, and I get our budget was axed. I understand that, but I do think that there's a way it can be done, but it's going to require sacrifice and maybe some wants from administration. As a parent of an incoming kindergartner, I really would like full-day kindergarten. I think he's going to need it in order to meet the Common Core, which your slide is up there so nicely for me. Um, I don't see how our kindergartners are going to be able to meet the Common Core standards in a majority of our schools. It's just not possible. That's the reality of it. You're setting our kids up for failure right from the start, and that is very discouraging <coughs> and disheartening and scary for me as a parent. So I'm asking for you to find a way. I know it's going to hurt, and people may not be happy, but even as a parent, I have to make decisions for my kids that don't always make them smile. So I'm going to make one more plug because I can't be here Wednesday night. I have to be at a school governance council meeting. The other concern that I have is marketing our schools. I've learned today from a few parents whose kids are going into sixth grade that the first orientation that they will have is May 9th. Magnet school applications are due by the end of January. We're killing ourselves here, folks. Same thing with kindergarten. We don't have an orientation until May, the end of May. People have already decided whether they're coming here or not. We've got to go out sooner and market and advertise. One of the things in our focus groups through community conversation was parents didn't know anything about the middle school. And that's very possible, and it could be that they're not doing their homework, but May 9th is a day late and a dollar short, in my opinion. So. For next year, I know it's too late for this year, but 
And the last thing is um, the community service requirement. I just have a question is, can a student, and I know this sounds crazy, could they do their full 40 hours in their freshman year and be considered done? I know it says you have to do 10 hours per year or whatever before you can be considered promoted to the next grade. So would it impact that? Let's just say you have a gung-ho freshman and they did their 40 hours, would they be eligible to continue to be promoted or would they still have to? So that's just a question that I have. And thank you for your time. Thank you. Is there anybody else who wishes to speak? Please come forward, state your name and address for the record. Good evening, uh, John Kovac, 24 Jan Drive. I just uh, want to talk briefly tonight about the community service requirements, since it looks like you're looking at revising that policy tonight uh, and from the information that was presented at the last board meeting. Uh, before you decide to change the graduation requirements or change the time frame to complete these hours, or to make it a soft 10 hour requirement. I just want you to keep in mind that 25% roughly of the school year is still left ahead of us. Um, that's a long time to complete 10 hours. Uh, kids procrastinate, that, that's a fact. I just want to remind you of your mission statement, which is the Vernon Public Schools, in partnership with family and community, is committed to provide a quality education with high expectations in a safe environment where all students become independent learners and productive contributors to society. So I just would ask, please don't give up on your high expectations yet. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else who wishes to speak tonight? Please come forward, state your name and address for the record. RHS students, board members, community leaders, and administrators. I want to thank Dr. Conway, Trish McCann, and the entire committee. Ms. Barbara, would you pull that microphone right up? Oh, I have to I'm start sorry. again. <laughs> thank you. I'm sorry. <laughs> you don't have to start again. Oh, my God. Okay. Thank you. Um, I want to thank Dr. Conway, Trish McCann, and the entire committee that worked on this project. You all did a fabulous job. I'm looking forward to the follow-up meeting on April 30th and being able to assist in this project in any way I can. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else who wishes to speak? Please come forward, state your name and address for the record. Julie Garceau, 14 Olson Drive. Um, I wasn't planning on speaking, but I just thought of something as they were talking. I unfortunately couldn't attend the community conversations and I've heard fabulous things about it. Um, but one of the things I heard did come out of it was a common theme of the negative perception that our schools have. And I think we all, I mean, that's not news to anybody, but um, a couple of meetings ago, I believe it may have been Tanya who brought up the need for us to be really putting a lot of positive stuff out there. Um, I work in a different school district, and every week in there, it's like our version of the reminder. Um, there's something about each school, something that they did. It's, it's not major milestones. It's, you know, we had the invention convention, those kind of things, all sorts of positive things that you're seeing at each school, what's happening. And I really, really think that needs to happen because there's a lot of really cool things happening at our schools. Um, and we're just, it's, you know, going back on what Tanya said, we're not advertising ourselves, we're not selling it. And we need to put that perception so people are hearing a little more than just a negative bottom 30, because there's, in my opinion, a whole lot of other good things happening here. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else who wishes to speak this evening? 